Tech Rock Reviews, Marmy Rock Show. I'm back with Jay Corsi Willis. We are back at Island Bay Days, and I mean, I just watched you do a killer set. Absolutely loved it. Welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, man. I'm having a great time. Glad to see you too. So, uh, how big of an adjustment was that for you being up there without a guitar in your hand? You talked about it. Oh, that was intense, man. The keyboards died, and my broken string in the middle of the first song. Actually, if it weren't for the guys that I had up there with me, I would have lost my mind. So. Those guys took over. They're all touring guys. All the musicians, they, they took over for me. They know the music well enough, so they put it up for me. That wasn't hard to adjust them with those guys. Talk about the difference, though. Like, you're, you're a front man because you do a lot of acoustic shows. I mean, a right. ton of those. But talk about this vibe, like being in front there as love it. the plugged-in band, man. Yeah. T- talk about the experience today. I love it, man. I, acoustic's my deep-down soul stuff, but when I can get up there on stage with all those musicians and really rock it out full band, that's that's where I really belong. You know, the acoustic stuff's fun for solo, solo shows, but when you're up there with a group of guys and the energy's running, there is nothing better. No better feeling in the world than that. Talk about this festival. How cool is this? We're sitting up here where Derek St. Holmes is down there. That is so cool. Uh, how did you get involved with this festival? You've been here a long time. A long time. Uh, the band I used to play in, The Frail, they, a couple of the guys knew the promoters for this festival, and one year they were like, you guys want to open up for Kicks? We said, yeah, why not? Let's open up for Kicks. So we threw a bunch of uh, equipment together one day. We weren't even planning on playing. Came up here and set up about six years ago, I guess, at the Bay Day, the last one that was on Kent Island. Opened up for Kicks, and from then, it's been locked in. And every, The frail's kind of dissolved a little bit, but since I still do all the full band stuff with my music, it just kept going, and I've been building a, a crowd. Every year I get the crowd gets bigger for me, so I'm happy with that. You know, This is where I gain most of my fans. So, so how do I get you out there? I mean, you are in this area of Maryland, man. It's kind of, you know, it's a little bit, I don't want to call it, it's not a region or it's not a country or anything like that, but it's not New York. It's not Philly, man. We got to get you out there. Like, what's the plan, man? How do we get your, you are such a good songwriter. How do we get this stuff out there? Next year, I'm hoping to keep the same group of guys together that were up there on the stage and see if we can't do some small touring up and down the East Coast. That's that's the plan anyway. It's just it's hard to find a group of guys that have the time and the dedication because the worst thing with bands is finding someone that's dedicated. Sometimes they don't show up, alcohol, drugs, you know, you have all that problem. <laughs> These guys have been doing it for years. I have no doubt in them. All the faith in the world. In fact, Derek St. Holmes, my drummer's up there right now. So yeah. he plays for multiple bands. We all know Matt. We know Matt. Yeah. Well, we've known Matt. Matt is on time. Point. Tell us a little bit more about your band. Introduce us to some of the guys uh, that you played with today. We got Frankie G. Frankie plays with Jimmy's Chicken Shack. He's got a couple other bands, wow. uh, Mayday, Mayday, and he's uh, he's he's been recording in studios forever. Yeah, he's touring in studio work. And Brian Ewald, also Jimmy's Chicken Ch- Jimmy's Chicken Shack, Jar Flies, Rachel Yamagata. He's toured with her a bunch. Dan Carlisle, he's from New York. He's also toured with Rachel Yamagata a lot. Dan and Brian were both on my last album. Then you got Matt Bowers, obviously. Drummer extraordinaire. He Matt, drummer for rent, man. Oh, the guy man, plays drummer for rent. I know. If Derek St. Holmes will use him, I'll use him. You know, I got no problem with that. I have all the faith, like I said. These guys, they've been doing it for so long. And honestly, I think they all have something minorly wrong with them. Because they're that good. Like I said, things fail on stage. They just pick up the music. They were playing stuff that I'm supposed to be playing. And they had not practiced that. So, more power to them. They can pick it up. Hey, uh, new tunes on stage tonight. I loved them, man. So talk about the new music you play today and when we're going to hear it like uh, recorded, where we can find it. I will be recording the next couple months, uh, all the way through the end of the year, back at Right Way Studios with Steve Wright and have probably pretty much the same group of guys in there that I had before. Brian and Dan will both be in there. But we're going a little heavier, I think. A little more Alice in Chains. Felt it. Yeah, yeah. We can keep it... Keep it rocking out. I mean, the last album was great, but I think I'm going to veer a little bit away from the acoustic stuff and get a little more, because that's really what I grew up on, was the 90s grunge, heavy, and kind of get a little bit away from the country scene. I can only do so much with my voice, but the music <laughs> is what's going to carry all that. I don't know, man. You had We talked about it out there. Like uh, I, I was describing you to friends right. that have never seen you before. Right. I said, first of all, the dude's a great songwriter, number one. Number two, plugged in. He's got a. I, I didn't even know who to compare you to. So, who do you compare yourself to? Do I, you? I don't really compare myself to anyone. But I've heard a lot. Uh, today, there was three girls out there that said Brent Smith with the Shine Down. Oh wow, that's a yeah. Cool. STP, Pearl Jam. Um, give me a little bit of Chris Cornell. Do you ever get Daughtry? Do you ever hear I the get Daughtry, Daughtry thing? Yeah. I've had Daughtry twice, and also um, Creed. Like yeah. old Creed, like yeah. the first two albums. So I get that a lot. So I do the har all that stuff for him because they like to hear that. Lace God Stap. I'm like, no, I don't want to play God Stap. But I get compared to all of that. Speaking of Dodger, have you ever thought about doing like The Voice or American Idol, anything? Because it almost just like, I just almost see you doing that. People ask me that 
a lot. The only reason I won't is because I'm not pop singer, and if you win, which congratulations all the winners, but if you do, you're kind of tied into a contract for the next five to six years, and you have to play what they want you to play. I don't do that. I am not very good at listening. I don't like playing things that I don't want to play. So that's really the hold back there. I mean, if they had something where it was like, hey, singer-songwriter contest, go for it. I'll go for it. But to be put in a position where I have to play what other people write, I just can't feel it. I have to write my stuff, and I have to sing my stuff. So I was trying to describe to somebody where we met you. I don't actually remember. I know we've been coming here, and I know we got your stuff online. But... Someone came up to me and said, uh, let's go tell him he doesn't know how good he is. Is that true? I mean, like, think about that. I, I, I know that's hard to answer. But it is hard to answer. Um, okay. So I'll starting. Put you on the spot. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I've heard this before, and I'm a very modest person. I grew up that way. And I think thinking that yourself, that you aren't as good as you should be, pushes you. And that's how I've always been. But lately I've been hearing, oh man, you're much better than you think you are. You shouldn't be here. You should be on tour. Da, 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 da. But if I ever get to that point and the modesty goes away, I feel like I'm going to ease off of my trying, the accomplishment that I want to have. So I push myself way harder than I probably should. But it's been growing and it's been working. So the day that I think I'm the best is the day I probably won't make any more. That's not going to work. So uh, we talked the last time you were on the show about the inspiration for all the tunes we heard on your last record. Where's the inspiration coming from? You know, you've got a little bit of a harder side to you now, so as we talk, just talked about. Where's that inspiration coming from for the lyrics and all? Anger, I think. That's my, that's my physical... or my, not my physical. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just... I don't know. I guess it's my, my mental therapy. Like, people go to... <laughs> some people go to shrinks. Others go do water sports and all kinds of X games. And I let it out through guitar. Outside of music, I'm a happy person. But when it comes to music, all the deep, dark secrets and all the dark stuff that I don't want to talk about comes out lyrically. So I don't really think I'm angry about anything, but everybody's been through hell at one point or another yeah. in their life. So I take all the bad stuff, and instead of being pissed off, can I say that? Yeah. Instead of being pissed yeah. off about it, I put it in the lyrics and music, and it comes out that way. But I wouldn't call myself an angry person, but I'm, I'm slightly more aggressive than some people. You know, I've heard that about myself, and I have to accept it sooner or later. <laughs> So it comes out musically. Do you ever, um, I never asked you this before, do you ever write for other people or do you uh, sing for other bands, like fill in? I have filled in for a couple bands, yeah. I, I mean, I, I fill in for a lot of cover bands too, that they need somebody to come up and sing. But I have done some studio work, um, nothing big time, just a couple different guys. It's funny, when you play instruments, they want you in the studio all the time, but for a certain voice, <laughs> Believe it or not, I've had a lot of rappers ask me to come in and sing Whoa, yeah, behind their, their hip-hop stuff, which is weird, because I don't that think weird. that my voice would fit that, but I get that a lot more often than rock stuff. So I think people are, are slightly intimidated by my vocals, because so I've heard they are a niche. It's not like I sound like everybody else. So either they really love them, or they're, they hate them. One of the two. It either goes <laughs> one way or the other. So no, I don't get a lot of that. On I've been looking for it. I would love to do more studio stuff with other groups. And maybe with this group of guys that I have running with me now, who knows? The sky's the limit, really. Well, I'd love to hear who you end up writing for, man, because, you know, uh, we know this industry, and even if you don't make it yourself, you can make a good living writing songs. And, uh, yeah, man, dude, you've got the, the yeah. knack for it, for sure. So Chris Stapleton. That's a perfect <laughs> man. That guy's been writing for years, and now he's finally made it. But nobody even realizes how many hits he had out before he started doing it for his own. So, uh, hey, man, one last thing before I let you go. Like, so who do you like to listen to? Like, when you're, when you're not writing, what do you listen to? What's on the iPod? Man, I love Matchbox 20. Dude, old oh, Matchbox wow. Matchbox 20 and new Matchbox 20. I don't like their new stuff as much as their old stuff. Candlebox, uh, Pearl Jam, obviously, SDP. But even, like, some of the newer stuff, uh, I listen to a lot of country these days, but not the pop country, like Brothers Osborne, Chris Stapleton, like I mentioned, even Zach Brown. I, I like... Slipknot. <laughs> I mean, I'm all over the place. I grew up in Metallica. So whatever mood I'm in for the day, that's where I'm going. You know, it's going to be either we're listening to like folk music or we're listening to heavy metal death music. So, well, it kind of explains the diversity we hear in your music. Right. So, uh, man, Jay Corsi Willis, thanks for being here on the show, man. I, again, hats off. Great set out there today, man. You did awesome. It felt good. I really did. All the technical difficulties it made out for. We didn't notice them. No joke. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I didn't notice them either. Once I realized it was all okay, I was like, hmm, let's do this. I got this. <laughs> Mark of a true professional, man. Uh, Jay Corsi Willis, go out and check his, out his music. And uh, thanks again for being here on The Rock Show. Thank you.